You are listening to KZT Cornerstone Online Live. My name is Newton Ha. As it is Bible, April 3rd, 2022, this is preached by Pastor Joseph Park. Our premier narration will be broadcast through Facebook and YouTube channels. Today's mystery message, The Colors of Faith, Luke chapter 7, verse 1 to 10, 36 to 50. After Jesus had finished teaching all this to the people, he entered Capernaum, a centrium there had a slave, who was highly regarded, but who was sick at the point of death. When the centurion heard about Jesus, he sent some Jewish elders to him, asking him to come and heal his slave. When they came to Jesus, they urged him earnestly, He is worthy to have you do this for him because he loves our nation and even built our synagogue. So Jesus went with them. When he was not far from the house, the centurion sent friends to say to him, Lord, do not trouble yourself, for I am not worthy to have you come under my roof. That is why I did not presume to come to you. Instead, say the word and my servant must be healed. For I too am a man set under authority, with soldiers under me. I say this to one, go as he goes into another, come and he comes into my slave. Do this, he does this. When Jesus heard this, he was amazed at him. He turned and said to the crowd that follow him, I tell you, not even in Israel have I found such faith. So when those who had been sent returned to the house, they found the slave well. Now one of the Pharisees asked Jesus to have dinner with him. So he went into the Pharisee's house and took his place at the table. Then when a woman of that town, who was a sinner, learned that Jesus was dining at the Pharisee's, at Pharisee's house, she brought an alabaster jar of perfumed oil. As she stood behind him at his feet, weeping, she began to wet his feet with his tears. She wiped them with his hair, kissed them, and anointed them with the perfumed oil. Now when the Pharisees who had invited him saw this, he said to himself, If this man were a prophet, he would know who and what kind of woman this is who is touching him, that she is a sinner. So Jesus answered him, Simon, I have something to say to you. He replied, Say it, teacher. A certain creditor have two debtors. One owed him 500 silver coins, the other 50. When they could not play, he canceled the, bet, the debt of both. <clears throat> which one of them, which of them will love him more? Simon answered, I suppose the one who had the bigger debt cancels. Jesus said to him, You have judged rightly. Then turning toward the woman, he said to Simon, Do you see this woman? I entered your house. You gave me no water for my feet, but she, was, but she has wet my feet with tears and wiped them with her hair. You gave me no kiss of greeting. But from the time I entered, she has not stopped kissing my feet. You did not anoint my head with oil, but she has anointed my feet with perfumed oil. Therefore I tell you, her sins, which were many, are forgiven. Thus she loved much, but the one who is forgiven loves little. Then Jesus said to her, Your sins are forgiven. But those who were at the table with him began to say among themselves, Who is this? Who even forgives sins? He said to the woman, Your faith has saved you. Go in peace.
You are listening to KZT Cornerstone Online Live. My name is Newton Ha. As today's Bible, April 3rd, 2022, this is preached by Pastor Joseph Park. Our permitted narration will be broadcast through Facebook and YouTube channels. Today's mystery message, The Colors of Faith, Luke chapter 7, verse 110, 36 to 50. After Jesus had finished teaching all this to the people, he entered Capernaum, a centrium there had a slave, who was highly regarded, but who was sick at the point of death. When a centurion heard about Jesus, he sent some Jewish elders to him, asking him to come and heal his slave. When they came to Jesus, they urged him earnestly, He is worthy to have you do this for him because he loves our nation and even built our synagogue. So Jesus went with them. When he was not far from the house, the centurion sent friends to say to him, Lord, do not trouble yourself, for I am not worthy to have you come under my roof. That is why I did not presume to come up to you. Instead, say the word, and my servant must be healed. For I too am a man set under authority, with soldiers under me. I say this to one, go as he goes into another, come and he comes into my slave. Do this, he does this. When Jesus heard this, he was amazed at him. He turned and said to the crowd that follow him, I tell you, not even in Israel have I found such faith. So when those who had been sent returned to the house, they found the slave well. Now one of the Pharisees asked Jesus to have dinner with him. So he went into the Pharisee's house and took his place at the table. Then when a woman of that town, who was a sinner, learned that Jesus was dining at the Pharisee's, at Pharisee's house, she brought an alabaster jar of perfumed oil. As she stood behind him at his feet, weeping, she began to wet his feet with his tears. She wiped them with his hair, kissed them, and anointed them with the perfumed oil. Now when the Pharisees who had invited him saw this, he said to himself, If this man were a prophet, he would know who and what kind of woman this is who is touching him, that she is a sinner. So Jesus answered him, Simon, I have something to say to you. He replied, Say it, teacher. A certain creditor have two debtors. One owed him 500 silver coins, the other 50. When they could not play, he canceled the, bet, the debt of both. <clears throat> which one of them, which of them will love him more? Simon answered, I suppose the one who had the bigger debt cancels. Jesus said to him, You have judged rightly. Then turning toward the woman, he said to Simon, Do you see this woman? I entered your house. You gave me no water for my feet, but she, was, but she has wet my feet with tears and wiped them with her hair. You gave me no kiss of greeting. But from the time I entered, she has not stopped kissing my feet. You did not anoint my head with oil, but she has anointed my feet with perfumed oil. Therefore I tell you, her sins, which were many, are forgiven. Thus she loved much, but the one who is forgiven loves little. Then Jesus said to her, Your sins are forgiven. But those who were at the table with him began to say among themselves, Who is this? Who even forgives sins? He said to the woman, Your faith has saved you. Go in peace.
Many people desire to be used by God and to see the work of God, the powerful work of God that we saw throughout the history. However, no matter how much prayers we pray, no matter how many people we gather, we will not see the true powerful work of God, the awakening, unless we stand on the, on the foundation of the truth, the right doctrine. Throughout the histories, awakenings, revivals, the stir of the church was done when there was an outpouring of the Holy Spirit. However, the outpouring of the Holy Spirit cannot come unless we stand on truth and pray. I see so many people praying, but they're not praying in a right way. A lot of people today are seeking powers in different places and thinking like the anointing of the Holy Spirit are just limited to the spiritual gifts. The Lord gives spiritual gifts, but that's not the foundation. The prosperity gospel can never bring a genuine awakening. It will not change a person's life. When the awakenings happened, when the genuine revival happened, people's lives were changed because the right gospel was preached. The reason why I've not been uploading videos recently is because I've been studying Puritan theologies, Reformed theologies, and the history of the early church, and the early awakenings and the revivals. And when you study these things, you will understand why the church today has lost the spiritual power. It is because we have lost the truth, the right doctrine. We're not preaching the right word of God. Even if you preach the prosperity gospel, at the stage, the worshipers may look like they're having the best of their times, but in their heart, they may be dry and the fruits will be temporary. The fruits of the souls that are listening to the message will only be temporary. Whenever there were great awakenings and revival, the souls, the, the people were genuinely converted. Those who were of the flesh were born again in spirit through their faith in Jesus Christ. There was an eternal impact in the soul's life. When you study the first and second great awakenings in America and great revival, revival that happened in Korea, you will find out that these things started uh, in the, uh, the foundation of Puritan theologies. If you want to see a genuine outpouring of the Holy Spirit, we must go back to the messages that they preached to the people. They didn't preach other things. They didn't preach something that would inspire your souls or your daily life. What they preached was the gospel, just the gospel itself. Their prayers were not based on their work. Their prayers were not to rely on human wisdom. They prayed because they knew they have no righteousness. They were just sinners who were saved before God. They knew that the work of God can only be done when we rely on the Lord. So their prayers were not boasting their strength or anything, asking for some kind of extra power to impress people. Their prayers was focused on, uh, uh, on the Lord, on the power of the Lord, that God would intervene in the dark times like this. And when people prayed on the right foundation and preached the right gospel, God always intervened. The darkness we see in these times is because we are lacking in truth. I, I see people preaching the gospel, but it's not the gospel. Some people preach work-based salvation and some people preach prosperity gospel. But when an awakening or a work of God was done, God used those who are very aware of what the gospel is. They were people who studied the theology very, very deeply. They knew how to discern the wrong teachings and the right teachings. If you want to pray a prayer that's anointed by the Holy Spirit, I ask you, do not seek for anything else, but go before the Lord and study the gospel. First, let the gospel be made right to you. Are you really born again? Do you only proclaim the righteousness of Christ before God or your work? Do you recognize that you are a hopeless sinner? Without God's grace, you'll be gone. Before asking God to give you some powers and gifts to impress people, go to the Lord and see who you are before Him and see what He has done for you. Let the Holy Spirit overwhelm you.
and rule over you that you may be subject to Christ. This is all God's grace and God's doing. The power of the Holy Spirit is an exaltation of Jesus Christ. I know you're hungry and thirsty. Study the word. And I suggest some people who want to go deeper to study Puritan theologies, the early histories of revival and awakenings. God loves you, and he will finish the good work that he started in you. I'll see you soon.